So this girl was found dead in a hostel lodge early February in 2024. At first, the police thought it was court related. Other students thought it was a cultist that may have done this to her. And it was creating tension amongst the students of Adekunle adjacent university in all those states. However, since it was an off-campus lodge, the possibility that it may have been anyone was just wide. And when the police got involved, it didn't take long before the killer was found. 20-year-old Ife Lua Adekunle was in her 300 level in economics department in AAUA when this tragedy happened and she stayed off camp, lived by herself. In the lodge that she lived at, other students also lived there. It was a student lodge. And it was believed that she mostly kept to herself. However, she would associate with other students and neighbors from time to time. But she was always reserved. Unfortunately, on the 2nd of February 2024, it turned out that someone got into her home and decided to take her life. When it was reported to the police, the police came, assessed the crime scene and evacuated her body. Upon looking at the crime scene, the police noticed that something was missing. A mobile phone, an iPhone XR, which indicated that whoever came to kill her also stole her mobile phone. And this was where the police was going to trace through. It's unclear if they questioned her neighbors, but I'm sure they did. And typically people would most likely say they didn't hear anything or they didn't see anything or see anyone. Usually, in situations like this, her boyfriend or whoever she was in a relationship with would be the first person that they would suspect. And it's not clear if they went through that route. However, the moment they saw that her mobile phone was stolen, they just went through that method. And in a few days, maybe a week or two time, her phone was traced through some tech guy. And they were able to find out that a SIM card that was not hers had been put in the phone and that phone was traced to a woman in Ondo State. When they got to the woman, it turned out that the woman had a child in AAUA and that was when they decided, okay, let's find out who this child is because clearly the woman does not stay in the school and the woman would not have come to the school to stab her and collect her phone. So since the woman had someone, a child, a son in AAUA, the police followed that trail and a young man named Olubodun Sani was eventually dragged in. It turned out that Sani was the son of the woman that the police traced the SIM card that was put in the deceased girl's phone. And another thing that it also turned out to be was that Sani was next door neighbor to Ife Lua. So this boy turned out to be the neighbor of this girl. And that was when the police were able to understand that there can be some kind of relationship here. And clearly, she knows him and he knows her. And for her SIM card or for her mobile phone to be traced to his own mother shows that there is a connection, which meant that he knew something about this girl's death. If at all, he was not the one who did it. When Sunny was taken into custody for questioning, the police claimed that he eventually confessed to killing Ifeloa because of the phone. Mind you, he's a final year student, so I'm guessing maybe he did this because he thought he could get away with it. But it's so ridiculous that a young man at the age of 21 would want to kill someone for an iPhone XR. And according to the police investigation, still, they believe that Sunny started expressing interest in Ifeolua because of her phone. That he spotted her phone and maybe had been trying to steal it. However, could not get the best access because, like I said, she was someone who they said was always kept to herself. She probably wouldn't let you into her apartment unless it was important. And on the said day that she was murdered, he befriended her and was trying to, you know, collect something from her phone. He claimed that he wanted to take some movies from her iPhone and she was cool with it. She was like, okay, fine, you can take it. On that day, it was believed that her battery was low. So she was like, my battery is low, but see what you can take before the phone dies. But she did not let him into her house. She was by the door and he was by the door and she was waiting. Since it's an iPhone, I guess maybe he also had an iPhone that could do the airdrop and, you know, transfer everything as fast as she could. But she did not let him in. However, though, she complained that her phone was dead and there was no power he thought of a good idea that he was going to bring a power bank to help her charge. And I think this is where he got her. 
maybe if she had her own power bank or maybe if she had a generator or she had her own source she would not have needed his help but that offer of a power bank kind of let her drop her guard and immediately he came back with a power bank she was like okay fine call me so i'll be charging my phone while you make your transfer and that was it that was it guys somewhere in that room that day sunny got up attacked her tried to strangle her maybe did and other than a power bank he also came back with a knife and somehow brought it out and stabbed her on her chest killing her instantly before running away with the phone to hide it in an uncompleted building oh my god this is so low so low so low you just took a whole human being's life because of an iphone xr and you're in your final year this is appalling I mean, we've seen people kill people for far less, but nothing is worth killing. It's, it's disappointing, to say the least. Heartbreaking that this young girl whose future is ahead of her was cut short by a greedy 21-year-old zoology. Maybe he knew his course was not going to... Is it geology? It's just sad. According to the police, still, after he stole the phone, he removed her SIM card, broke it, and inserted it, his own SIM card and used the phone. And after that, he removed the SIM card and went to hide the phone. I guess he was waiting for the whole thing to die down. He was waiting for the police to investigate it. He was waiting for somebody else to take the fall before he can probably start using the phone comfortably. Because clearly, if he's found the phone, it's, it's over for him. So he hid the phone. But I guess since it's an iPhone, there's a way you can trace these things and know what and what have been done with that phone. And... That was how the police were able to figure out that he had used the phone and figure out the number that was probably on the in the SIM card. And I guess that SIM card was somehow registered in his mother's name or so. And that's how they traced it to the mom and somehow got to him. When Sunny was eventually arrested for the murder of Ife Olua, it was eventually paraded. Now, in the video where he was paraded, I think in this picture here, he was asked... And he claimed he did not kill the girl. He said he knows nothing about the girl and that that phone, he bought it from someone else, which kind of now throws the police off balance. And also on the contrary, he claimed that the police statement or the statement that the police are saying he made or the confession that the police are saying he made, he never made it. That that is a lie, that the police just made that up and accused him of saying that he agreed to steal the phone. You know, the story that he went to bring the power bank, Starba, all those details. He's saying that those things never happened, that he never even said those things, that the police made up the story in their head and that the phone, he bought it from someone. And when they asked him who he bought it from, he did not drop any name. And I think that is where the police are like, well, you got to say a name. If you're claiming you bought it from someone and you're really innocent, which is a possibility, then who did you buy it from? Because that person may have been the one to do the killing. But the odds are against him. The odds are really against him at this point because, you know, he is yet to mention the name of wherever he bought it from. Although we've not had an update on this case, there is no update. But me hearing him deny that he did it or also deny the statement that the police said he made makes me feel like he may want to fight this in court. However, again, like I said, if he doesn't come up with the name of the person he bought it from, he's going to take the fall for it. I just feel like this is a very tricky time. This is why you just got to be careful who you are friends with. Because right now, all he has to do is mention someone's name, throw somebody under the bus. Maybe if he knows a friend that steals phone, throw him under the bus. Because people who are capable of killing are capable of anything. And that's it. And I just feel bad for Ife Olua because this did not have to happen. She just let the devil into her house and like the Bible say, all the devil comes to do is to kill and destroy. This young man is a very horrible human being. If he did what it's being accused of, I feel like... It was just a matter of time before he did it again. For a young 21-year-old to kill another human being because of iPhone XR, not just kill, target the person, trail the person, pretend to be friends with the person because of an iPhone XR, kind of shows you what he would do for, I don't even know, an Apple laptop, a television, a car. This is, the, this is how killers are made. This is how people grow up and start doing the worst for the most. It's disappointing. I'm so sorry that as sad as it is it's just disappointing that 
people are doing this for fun, killing people for fun. I just feel a whole chunk of disappointment.